When I first started trying to think of how to define Hachi's style, I was sort of at a loss. All I remembered her fashion being was just cute and pretty normal. Hachi herself says that her favorite things change all the time, and Nana even has trouble recognizing her the second time they meet because she doesn't really have a set style. While it's true that she doesn't have a loud style and that she does go through more transformations than Nana, her style isn't actually too hard to break down. She changes her style based on what influences are around her at the time. This is how most of us approach fashion truth be told, and it may be part of why in Ayazawa's interview with Shoujo Beat, she says that most fans seem to empathize with Hachi while they look up to and admire Nana. We dress like the communities we're a part of and reflect the influence of the time and even the influence of our friends. It's only in comparison to Nana that this trait is even made to stand out. Nana looks the same in flashbacks as she does as an adult, albeit with slightly different hair. Part of this could be because she's been working odd jobs and playing in bands since she was a teenager, while Hachi went from high schooler to art student to a 20-something bumbling through early adulthood in Tokyo. Nana had to grow up at a much younger age, and so she may have found a sense of self much earlier out of necessity. Her style first starts out as a toned-down predecessor of more extreme variations of gyaru fashion known as kogal or kogyaru. The term gyaru first started to be used in Japan around the 1970s. It came from the name of a popular brand of jeans, but eventually gained popularity as a term used to describe girls who were more carefree and superficial. Not that they were superficial necessarily, but that was the common interpretation. While the term has been around since the 70s, the styles we recognize as gyaru fashion didn't start popping up until the mid-90s. That's where kogal comes in. Kogal was the first gyaru subculture to pop up and the origins of the name are debated. It could be a combination of the word for high schooler, kokose, or the word for child, kodomo or ko, with the word gyaru that already existed to describe a free-spirited girl. Kogal was initially a more upper-class style that sort of mimicked American teenage beauty standards, which meant getting tans and lightening their hair. It was a rejection of traditional Japanese beauty standards that emphasized pale skin and being more demure. Eventually, the style evolved and got more extreme. Part of this was because it spread to other social groups and they put their own spin on the movement. Office ladies going out to party in bodycon dresses in the early to mid-90s helped get tight clothes associated with the gyaru image, which didn't help its already bad reputation. Kogal can be defined by slouchy socks, shortened skirts, tan skin, and basically whatever you could get away with doing to show some individuality and cuteness despite the often strict uniform policy of many Japanese schools. It was at the peak of its popularity from 1995 to 1998. But all gyaru styles continue to live on, especially after J-fashion subcultures took off overseas. If you're looking for a gyarusa, there might just be one in your area. If not, there are plenty of people dedicated to it online. Gyarusa is a combination of the words gyaru and circle, and it basically means gyaru squad. Anyway, in the 90s, kogal had a negative connotation, and so did gyaru in general. They only briefly touch on this in the manga when Junko says she thought Hachi was really owning the whole Kogal thing by having an affair with the married man. Kogals and Gyaru were often considered promiscuous, and you can see this touched on in other Japanese media. In Peach Girl, they go to great lengths to show that even though Momo looks like a more hardcore iteration of the Kogal or Gyaru than Nana does, including tan skin and bleached hair, it's all just a coincidence because she's on the swim team, so she got a tan from practicing and the chlorine turned her hair blonde. Just hers and nobody else's, mind you. But they set this up to show that people's assumptions that she's fast or a partier are unfounded and use it as a way to indulge in the aesthetic of Gyaru while distancing Momo from its popular connotations and throwing other participants of the fashion movement who look that way on purpose under the bus in a very I'm not like other girls sort of move. Some other types of gyaru that came later are Ganguro, which peaked in popularity originally around the late 90s. It was characterized by a much darker tan and platform boots or loafers. Junko actually references this in the manga when Kyosuke says he likes tan women. Yamanbel was much more in-your-face and peaked around the early 2000s. It was meant to resemble a mountain witch and was characterized by an even darker tan and white panda-style eye makeup. 
Yamanba gave birth to Manba, which was similar but much more colorful. Both styles are sort of more modern iterations of Ganguro, which, although very similar to Manba in execution, is just not a term that's used as much after the 90s. And around 2006 to 2007, the styles Agejo and Himegyaru became popular. There's also the more mature Onegyaru or Big Sister Gyaru. But getting back to the subject at hand, Hachi actually has a fully Gyaru sister who wears much more of the typical Gyaru fashion of the late 90s to early 2000s and sports the telltale bleached hair and tan skin. She's presented as a lot wilder than Hachi is though, in keeping with the stereotype. Kogal is probably the most tame iteration of Gyaru, and Hachi only briefly dabbles in the style before moving on to embrace a more generally 90s inspired art student look. After she graduates and the man who was taking advantage of her gets transferred to Tokyo, her center of gravity becomes Junko and art school. This is where we see her dressing in platform shoes, floral prints, and jeans with bandanas. This aesthetic is still feminine, but it's also more boyish looking than anything she wears after deciding to head to Tokyo. Mostly just because after the move, she wears a lot less pants and keeps her hair longer. The bandanas or scarves she wears here become one of the things that remain relatively consistent in her style throughout her different transformations. After her Tokyo move, her next identifiable phase is her vintage era, when she was working at a vintage store. Once the shop closes, that era is also brought to a close though, and the next major phase that dictates her fashion is her office job. For this job, she starts wearing typical office lady looks, which makes sense. I can't say whether she liked these clothes or wore them to suit the job, but it still marked a distinct change in the way she was dressing. Throughout all of these transformations, we also see her beginning to wear more and more Vivian Westwood. I love this because it's reflective of Nana's influence on her. When they first met on the train, Nana's Westwood ring was one of the first things Hachi noticed and admired about her appearance. We don't see Hachi in Westwood before she meets Nana, which could be because she never had any adult money or because she just never had access. She recognizes the brand immediately though, so it seems like she at least knew of it beforehand. Wow, a designer ring! That is so cool. Huh? Is the smoke bothering you? No, 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 that's okay, I'm fine. So, if you were going to imitate her style, what would you do? Keep your look feeling feminine and incorporate things like scarves or bandanas, especially worn like this. Also, when it comes to her skirts and dresses, she generally wears things that are a little longer than what Nana wears, so think knee length. Finally, you should also incorporate some Vivian Westwood accessories. Hachi may not wear as much Westwood as Nana, but she's still a fan. If you want to imitate her style literally, then I recommend shopping a mixture of vintage, Vivian Westwood, and any brand that carries light clothes that are on the more modest side. Here's some examples. This Depop shop, Daisy's Junk, has a lot of simple pieces that capture the general vibe of 90s to early 2000s shoujo fashion. Hachi doesn't generally dress this casually too often, but it's the vibe I get from this top she's wearing in this picture. Also, this purple skirt is a good fit as well. I also found a few vintage pieces on Etsy that I think really match her style. I can easily see her wearing this outfit, maybe with an understated pair of Vivian Westwood earrings and a simple heel. This scarf is a pretty good match for the sort of scarf she wears a lot in the anime, and it being vintage is like the icing on the cake. I even managed to find a few brown boots that look really similar to some that she wears in the show on Depop. If I were going to update her fashion, I would make it less centered in 90s and early 2000s fashion trends. You could honestly dress exactly like her today and look great, especially because of all the Y2K nostalgia we've been wading through, but I think if Hachi were in her late teens and early 20s right now, then I can see her swapping the part of her wardrobe that was on trend then for some newer pieces. The things I imagine I'd keep the same are her bandanas and her vintage looks because we do want it to still resemble her style in the show and vintage fashion is pretty timeless. Here's some examples of pieces I'd buy if I were trying to imitate her style but in a distinctly 2021 way. First to take care of her bandanas, I'd rely on Room Shop. They have a lot of cute stuff to choose from and it's something that I think Hachi would wear pretty often given how much they show up in her outfits already. I love her fitted waist flared skirt looks, so I can really see her in this dress and even in this trench coat that calls back to some of her vintage influences. Finally, I also love her in pearls, whether they are Westwood pearls or not. 
So that's all I have to say about Nana Komatsu, i.e. Hachi style. I hope you liked this video. If you did, subscribe. And if you want to see me put together more outfits for fictional characters, follow me on Instagram at Ninth House Moon.